Hi, I'm Mike Malaska, and welcome to Malaska Golf Live. You know, it's been a long time putting all this together and being able to come to all of you and be able to do this on, on YouTube. Uh, my career has been an interesting one. And first of all, I want to thank all of you that, that watch the YouTube channel and that are members of the site because you've been a big inspiration to me and you've really helped me to understand, you know, what you really need and, and what I have to give you so you can play the game to your best. Now, we're going to talk about what fin fundamentals are keeping you from playing your best, which is interesting because fundamentals, what really are they? You know, that's really an, an interesting thing. And when I look at my career, um, and we'll probably do a whole show on just what happened to me, because I'm sure a lot of you can uh, empathize with where I came from, which is what I think a lot of times why people like what I do is because I've kind of been where you're at. I mean, I wrote my first book, it was called I Feel Your Pain, and that was all about what the game is, why do you play it, how it relates to other sports. Um, and the big part of it was the mental part about just why do you play and what are, the, what are the issues that go on in the game. And a lot of you related to that because it's about what I went through. And I went through a lot of ups and downs. And I was really good when I started. I made some, some visual comparisons that worked. And I got really good. And then all of a sudden, instruction hit me. I tried to get better, like all of you. We're all trying to get better. And well intended that the people that helped me were, what they actually did to me was made the game more difficult. So a lot of these fundamentals that are out there, a lot of guys' ideas are, are ideas. They're preferences. They're not necessarily you have to. Now, what I've learned over my career is that the body does certain things. And there's a lot of ways to swing a golf club. Which one's the right one? Well, I don't know that you go which one's right and which one's wrong, but I can tell you this. What I do on this site and what I do for people in general, I look at things based on my background. I mean, I was a player. I spent, I've spent thousands of hours hitting balls and studying the swing for myself personally. I mean, I didn't get into this, honestly, to help any of you. I got into it because I was really pretty good when I started, and then the more I took lessons and the more I worked on, the worse I got. And I was okay. I mean, I could make it work, but it just wasn't what it was at first. So when I ended up getting hurt, hurt my lower back, hurt my neck, got involved with some things, trying to rehab myself, I'd been through the lessons, and I finally decided, look, I'm going to figure out what I had as a kid. Why did it work? Why was the game so easy? I mean, I... It never was that hard for me to hit the ball out in front of me and kind of control where it went. The hard part of golf was learning how to deal with the emotions, learning how to deal with the variables that show up. So when you look at this movement pattern called a golf swing, there's only so many things you can do. So we're going to talk today about one of the first fundamentals and one of the biggest things that really hurt me as a player. And now this is about all of you love power. You love to hit it further. Well, to hit it further, you have to have speed. But more important than that, you have to have control of the face. What controls the face? Your hands. So what's the first thing we're going to talk about? Grip. All right, now, you hear all these things about grip. You hear about this neutral palms opposing grip. And you put your hands together, you separate them. There's your grip. Now, once you have a good grip, stay with it your whole career. Well, my question would be, what's a good grip? Is neutral, is that a good grip? I mean, where, where, what's good? I mean, what, how do you know where to go with grip? So I can tell you that, for me, the biggest thing that hurt me over my career was when they changed my grip. Now, they took me from a grip that felt comfortable to me. Now, it just worked, and I'll tell you why it worked in a minute. And they put me into this neutral palms opposing grip. Well, here's what I can do now. You can put my hands on the club any way you want to put them on. Now, I take a little golf club and I can put my hands and just, I can cross hand it. There's a new guy, a kid out there now who's playing with his left hand low. I can play left hand low. Once I put my hands on the club, then what starts to happen is there's the club face sitting down there, wherever my hands are then I figure out what my hands have to do to make the club face square up on the ball. Here's the reality of this. You've got a lot of speed going on. Most people, you're not going to practice and spend hundreds of hours timing something 
to get that very fine timing down. A couple of degrees of face and the ball goes offline. So what kind of grip, how can you put your hands on the club so that when you swing and the weight of the club goes, that that club face is going to tend to square itself? So when you start looking at grip, the first thing you want to look at, <laughs> when you, if you just were to bend and let your arms hang in front of you, now you see how my left arm hangs. Now where I'm looking here is where's the back of my left wrist point? It doesn't point at the target. See, when I let my arm hang, it points on an angle here. Now when I first started golf, I came out of baseball. So I came out of this sport. So my left hand grip was what you would call really strong. Well, it just felt right to me because it, it, hit, it felt like how I hit a baseball. It felt like how I hit a tennis. So that's just how I gripped it. And then I put my thumb in. I put my right hand on there, and I just hit it. And the ball went pretty straight, most, mainly with a little draw, and I was fine. Now, here's what happened. I got pretty good. I won our state open. I was a college All-American. It had some success in college with that grip that looks really strong. But really, my left arm... It just matched how my arm hang. So what happens when I put my hand on there, I'm going to come up here. Here's what would happen to the face. So I got my grip on there. Now when I would swing and the weight of the club would pull on my arm, which is this is what happens. There's an inward force that comes in. And as my arm was pulled on, my left arm, and my body rotated, what did the face do? It squared itself. And so this hand, my right hand then, could come in and I could pressure the back of the shaft and just accelerate the club. So what I didn't have to do is I didn't have to try to catch the face up. You know, and here's where I see most of you. I probably have seen, well, I know I've seen hundreds of thousands of people in the last 20, 30 years. And I would say out of a thousand people, maybe two or three show up with their grip on there correctly for them. It's really interesting because as soon as that grip's off, as soon as that grip changes and the face, when your left arm straightens out, the face starts wanting to go this way, then what does your right arm want to do? Well, it wants to twist to square the face. Well, here's how your body works. If all of a sudden I'm coming down into the ball and my brain knows that my right arm is going to have to twist, it's extremely difficult to keep this right shoulder back and rotate your forearm. Now, that's what I had to learn to do. When they weakened my grip, which is what they did, they took me from, from here, and they put me into this neutral palms opposing grip. So now when I swung, the weight of the club, when it pulled on my arm, the face opened wide up. So now I'm coming into the ball. Well, now as I'm coming into the ball, now this arm had to start to twist, or my left wrist had to roll fast. Well, to keep my shoulder back and roll, that's a really hard thing to do because most people, as soon as this arm thinks it's going to go this way, what does your shoulder do? It wants to help you. And then somebody says, you're over the top. Okay, well, in my world, okay, people know they're over the top. Why are you over the top? Well, you're over the top a lot of times because you're trying to get the face to catch up. The reality in this game, again, you don't have to have a lot of this twist in your arms. In fact, the biggest thing I've seen in golf, there's a couple of things that have really changed in the last 15 years of golf. And one of them is grips have gotten significantly stronger, which is turned this way. The other thing is these guys, they hold the club in their fingers, not in the palm of their hands. It's in their fingers. Because when you put it in your fingers, it activates your wrists, and you have a lot more potential for speed. If I let that club creep up at all into the palm of my hand, it, now my wrists don't want to work. So if your wrists don't want to work, if this lever doesn't want to go, then you're going to try to use your body more to create speed instead of going ahead and letting your hands and wrists be the major lever. Now, is your body involved? Yes, it is, for sure. But if you don't have your hands on the club correctly, we're going to struggle big time with square in the face without a lot of tension. So the other thing, when you start looking at creating speed, you can't have tension and create a lot of speed. You can have effort there, but it doesn't necessarily equate into speed. So having your hands on the club correctly, so when the momentum of the club does its job, the club face squares itself. 
And again, let me talk about this for just a minute. This hand, your left hand, the club goes in your knuckles, the very back edge of the club. So all these grips now that have reminder grips on them, they go right in your fingertips. So I tell people, put it in your fingertips. I've seen very few people show up with the club too much in their fingers. I've seen a lot of people show up with it too much in the palm of their hands. So the, the first and most important thing is you get your left hand on there the way your arm hangs natural. So you don't try to hold anything, you just shake your arms out and look down, see where your left hand is. Put the club in your fingertips, make sure you see the same amount of your left hand. Now most of you are going to see three, maybe even see four knuckles of your left hand. And then you've got it in your fingers. Now how to check if it's in your fingers? All you got to do is pick the club up like you're going to pound a nail in the ground. Or set the club on your shoulder. You know, there you're going to grab it in your fingers. That's why tour players are constantly resting the club up here. Well, where am I going to grab the club? In my fingers. When you set the club down on the ground to try to grip it, what happens is the club tends to want to move up into the palm of your hand. So when you're working on your grip, try to work on your grip. Put the club head above your hands. Get the club face right, then get your grip. Then set the club down. Because if the club's above your hand, it's going to tend to push the club more into your fingertips. Now when you watch the tour players, you'll see some of them come up. They set the club on the ground and they grip it, but right before they hit it, you'll see them, they pick the club up. So they'll pick the club up like this and waggle it. Well, what did that just do? It put it more in their fingers again. Your fingers are where your strength is. You shoot a basketball, you do, you're playing with your fingers and your hands. You, you, you don't want your wrist to be frozen. When I hear people talk about take your hands out of the golf swing, now I understand what they mean, but the but what you think that means is that your hands don't do anything. That's, it couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, if, you, if your grip's correct and you use your hands correctly, you cannot use them too much. Now, th the reality is if I swing the club correctly with the right grip, the momentum of the club is doing more of the work for me. So the club goes. Now, here's what's interesting. I don't feel like my hands are doing that much. Why? because my grip's on there correct, so when I make a swing, it's the momentum of the club that's doing the work for me. But if you slow it down on a video and you watch what my hands are doing, they're extremely active. Well, they're reacting to the momentum of the club more than forcing it to do something. And that's when the swing starts to become really, really repetitive and creates a lot of speed when you take all the tension out, when you're not having to fix the club at the last minute. So again, grip, when they talk fundamentals, there's a lot of ways to grip a golf club. And like I say, I could put my hands on this thing any way you want me to, and within one or two shots, I can start making the ball go fairly decent. The problem is, under pressure, different shots, different lies, different clubs, can you consistently make that work? Well, that's very difficult. So when you put your hands on the club, if you simplify down, and what we're doing here, what I'm trying to do, it's not just play golf, it's understand it. And I'm going to keep saying that. You have to understand what you're doing. Now, if I would have understood grip, that first lesson that I took, and I was really pretty good, and I had my hands on there a certain way, and they said, oh, no, that's not going to work. You've got way too strong a left-hand grip. We've got to... Weaken your left, get you into a neutral palms opposing grip. As soon as they did that and the club face started to twist through the ball, then I had to start making this turn over and I had to twist my left hand. All that timing, yeah, I got pretty good at it. But when I think back over my career and I think of a lot of the shots and a lot of the problems I had with my swing was me compensating for a grip that didn't fit me. Was I able to do it? to some degree. Most of you out there, you, you shouldn't have to practice that much. Yeah, you have to practice, but I'm trying to make this simpler. This is about simplifying down what it is you're trying to do in your swing. And it's simplifying down the amount of practice time it takes to be fairly good where you can have fun with the game. 
I know tour players come in, and the first thing I talk to them about is their grip. Now, here's what, here's what will happen. Most really good players don't want you to touch their grip. But they've come for a lesson. Why are you here? They're there because something's going on in their swing, some compensation or some movement pattern that they don't like or some ball flight that's happening under pressure. So the first thing you want to look at is you want to see, are your joints aligning correctly? So see, if you get your joints to align correctly and everything's working the way it's supposed to, a lot of those compensations go away. So the, the question becomes, do you want to understand your grip and keep the compensations, which means you have to practice certain things and certain shots are going to show up. Now, if you're okay with that, fine. Or do you want to fix the grip a little bit and have all those compensations start to go away because they don't have to do it anymore? So if I take this big club and you look at what this face is doing, so if I'm doing this right here and I've got the face going really fast and somebody else is playing and their club face is doing this through that same area, okay? I'll tell you who I'm going to take to play. I mean, this guy here is going to hit a lot straighter. That's what I did as a kid. That's my grip was right, and my right arm was accelerating the club. My grip was correct, and my right hand was hitting, and then just like I threw a baseball, a lot of shot a basketball. So my right wrist was working this way, and my left arm was square in the face. When they changed my grip, and it started going here, and this started to twist, the more speed I had, the more I had to time this, the easier it was to hit the ball offline. So the question becomes, is there a right or wrong grip? In my world, there's a grip that makes the game the easiest for you. It's where I'm at now. I've gone back to the grip I had when I was 16, 17, 18 years old. Instinctively, I just put my hands on the club correctly. And that's where my ability to square the face was a lot easier. Plus, the other thing, I always saw the club face, this. This was the bat. This is what I was trying to square, not the club shaft. So my hands were on the club correctly, and the club face was in my hand. So it was easy for me to hit a stationary ball and hit it fairly straight. Now, when they moved my grip, all of a sudden, what my hands had to do to make that face work became more complicated. So now, if we start looking... If we start going to questions here, okay, we got one question about the right hand. So, where does it matter where I put my right hand relative to how my arm hangs? Well, it's not about, again, it's not about how your arm hangs with your right hand. Here's what your right hand does. In fact, let me grab, I've got a little glove here. This helps a lot of people to see this. So I've got a glove here and it's got a it's got a, a stick through it. Okay? There's my wrist. Now it's interesting when you play basketball or you throw a baseball or I throw a bowling ball okay you see my wrist isn't doing a lot of this. So this is how I play golf now. So my right hand goes on the club. So this stick is my wrist. So my left hand's on there the way my arm hangs. My right hand comes on. This valley on my, puts, fits right on the back of my thumb. Where's that wrist? Well, you see, that wrist is a mirror image of the club face. That wrist is a mirror image of the face. Okay, so then, now as I come into the ball, what's my right hand doing? It pressures the shaft and it accelerates. Pressures and accelerates. So I'm not dealing with a lot of this going on. Now, if it's doing this, everybody talks about this magic word called lag. All right, well, I'm going to show you one picture here relative to lag. And if we do this, if you understand this, then the lag thing starts to be easy to do. Here's a picture that all of us looked at this picture where somebody was coming in the ball and they're going to hit the ball, all right? This picture ruined, I think, more people than it helped. Now, when I come down into the ball, 
If you look at my right hand, you look at this wrist, there's two places my wrist can be at this point. One is like this, which is what I got I got talked into because if you look at Hogan and a lot of the guys, they come down with their right here and then they rotate their hand. Okay. Now there's also where a lot of really good players got where their right wrist at that point is like this. So you see where my right wrist is there. So rather than my palm facing out, my palm's facing more down. Now once it gets there and my left hand squares the face, when I run the club into the ball, if I let my wrist stay hinged, if I did not hinge it at all, what would happen? Well, the ball would go low, but it would go straight. Now, if all of a sudden, if my hand at impact caught up with my wrist, what would happen? Well, the ball would go high, higher, but it would go straight. What if my hand passed my wrist? The ball would go higher, but it would go straight. So all of a sudden, you've got all of this area here where the ball still goes fairly straight. Now, if you're coming into the ball and your hand's twisting like this, I mean, the, the amount of timing you have to have to make all of that work to get the loft of the face, the angle of the face, everything just gets more complicated. So the right hand is important. It doesn't go on the way your arm hangs natural because its role is very different. And here's why it's different. If you were to fall to the ground, and this is why how this wrist works, if I fell to the ground, what would my wrist do? Well, they line up with that force that's coming at it. See? So you fall to the ground, up against a wall, your wrist just goes like that automatically. Well, when you hit a golf ball, there's a force coming back through the club. So rather than it coming up through the ground, it's coming back through the club. So what does your right wrist want to do? It wants to line up. It's just like doing this. It's like slapping something. If I take my hand back, it wouldn't matter where I put my hand, and then I said slap my hand. See, this is going to line up. I'm not going to thumb first or hit this side first. This is going to line up. It's kind of what it naturally wants to do, that little move right there. And there my wrist is bent. So there's a low shot, there's normal, there's high, but you see what's happening here. So if my left hand is correct, then my right hand doesn't have to twist. So now all of a sudden the tension goes out because now you're not having to anticipate catch the face up. So yes, your right hand definitely has a role, but it is does not go on the way your arm hangs naturally. You'd have grips that look like this. Let's see if we can find another question here. It says a lot of people talk about what flexion uh, balance the tray on the backswing. I don't believe I've ever heard you address that as being a key component in the swing. Okay, when they talk about a tray, it's, it's your right hand here. So what they're talking about is at the top of your swing you feel like you're holding the tray in your hand where your palm is up. Well, that's a feeling and I would say that's closer to what I feel now. So my right hand works like this. So all my right hand's doing is this. Now as I go up to the top of my swing my right arm rotates a little bit so my hand is sitting like that. So yeah, it's like having a tray. What you don't want is you don't want your right wrist this way or this way. So my right wrist is in what they would call a throw position. So then from the top, I don't have to do anything. I just come down, I just throw the, throw the club at the ball. So my right wrist is doing this again. So when people ask me, relative to your golf swing, what do you work on? And again, we're coming back to grip. So I go, there's my grip. And that's what I'm working on in my swing. They go, well, that's not a swing. I go, well, yeah, that is my swing right there. Because once my hand, this hand's on there correctly, where the, the momentum of the club, when it pulls, is going to square the face, then all this hand is doing is directing the momentum and accelerating the club. It's not having to do a lot of this. You know, that's what made the game difficult for me. As soon as the game went from this game with my hands, because of my grip, as soon as it went from this game, and it went weaker, and it went into this game, that's when I started to struggle with being really consistent under pressure. Okay, now this is another one that comes from Martin. He says, how can I test if my left hand grip is correct? Let someone pull the club to see if it's square when, the, when, the, when force is applied. Is that a good way to do it? One of the things that got me, 
Now, like I say, what I've learned in golf, I've learned more in the last 35 years from people who are not in golf. Because people in golf have a preconceived notion about what the swing is and what it isn't. And a lot of that comes from players that were really good. And what happened to me was a physiologist that I was working with on my back that didn't know golf at all came up to me and he said, Mike, talk to me about grip. How do you grip the golf club? So I said, well, you, you've got to have a neutral palms opposing grip. And he goes, neutral palms, he says, I don't understand, what do you mean? I said, well, I guess uh, neutral, which means your hands are like this and your palms are opposing so they don't offset each other or do anything crazy. He goes, well, do both arms do the same thing? And I went, now I'm caught. I go, well, I guess no. Well, then why are you trying? So he asked me some questions that got me thinking. And he says, you know, I've watched a golf swing and I've noticed at impact with the golf swing your left arm is straight because the club's pulling on it and your right arm's still bent like you hit a baseball. And I said, yeah. And he goes, well then, if, if it's about controlling the face, wouldn't you want your joints to line up so when the weight of the club pulled on your arm, it would line your joints up, which would line the face up. And I went, I guess. So he says, well, hold the club up. So I took the grip that I had at the time and he took a hold of the toe of the club and he pulled my arm and the face went just like that. And he says, okay, let go of the club. And then he turned the club and he put it up to square and he says, now re-grip it. Now put the club on the ground. And as soon as I did that, I've had a couple of epiphanies in my career. Uh, if you want to call them aha moments, I call them want to shoot yourself moments where all of a sudden I'm looking at something and I'm thinking, well, that's where I gripped the club as a kid. So as soon as he did that to me and he pulled on my arm and then he moved the face and I re-gripped it and I put the club down and I looked at my left hand, I went, that's exactly where I used to hold it when I was a kid. So I, as soon as we got through, I went out to the range and I'd spent my whole professional career with this neutral left hand grip, supposedly. I go to the range, strengthen my grip. First ball I hit, I hooked it a little bit. By about the fourth or fifth ball, I'm just, I'm pure in it again. That year, in 1986, I played really well. I played really well in the US Open at Shinnecock. I actually, Saturday was in one of the last few groups. So just a little teeny grip change. And I went from a decent player to being playing well enough and hitting the ball well enough to contend in a major championship in the U.S. Open. That's how critical it is. So we're going to kind of wrap things up here because I want to just highlight the importance of understanding grip and understanding your body. Like I say, there's a lot of ways to swing the golf club. There's a lot of ways to put your hands on the club. But what we're trying to do is I'm trying to simplify down for all of you the control of the face. If you don't have any face control in golf, you can't play the game. It's like if you go skiing and you're not very good with your edges, speed isn't going to help you. You're never going to be very good. You have to get really good with your edges. It's the same in tennis. It's the same in any sport. You know, you have to have control of your edges. Or the, in, in, in golf, the edges is the club face. So how you put your hands on the club and what your arms are having to do can either make the game extremely complex or make it as easy as it can possibly be. So having a grip that fits you where the momentum of the club squares the face and you can take your tension out and create speed, every single one of you are going to start to find that you're going to hit the ball a lot better. It's going to be a lot easier to be consistent. And everybody wants distance. Well, distance is about speed. Okay, well, if speed stabilizes the face, you have a chance. If speed makes the face twist all over the place, then what's going to happen? All right, you're going to hit it sideways. So review your grip, make sure you've got it on there correctly. And, and again, how do you make sure it's correct? Look at how your left arm hangs. If you, if you remember, just look at how your left arm hangs, get it in your fingertips, and your right hand comes in, with your right arm, this right wrist, right on the back of that thumb so this arm can push and accelerate. If you just do those two things, most of you are going out to play today, 
go hit a few balls with, and do that with your grip. Check and see what happens. I guarantee you, you'll hit a lot more solid shots. Now, you may hit a few to the left. That's okay. And those of you who hit big hooks, okay, it's, it's more about look at your grip and how probably how this hand's working. You're probably turning this one over. So go out, make sure your grip is on there for you. There is not one grip that fits everybody. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for regular updates and tips. Thanks for watching.